Ebel, who parades under the name of Roscoe, and will also be meeting a beautiful colonel's daughter, that is to say, a beautiful daughter of a colonel, and she is called Charlotte Rampling. But my first guest said this two years ago at the height of his fame as a teeny bop idol. And this is what he said. There'll be a time when this whole thing will be over. I won't do concerts anymore. I won't wake up in the morning feeling drained and I won't be working a punch card schedule. I've had to sing when I was hoarse. I've had them with a gun at my head almost. I have an image of myself in five years time. I'm living on an island. The sky is blue. The sun is shining and I'm smiling. I'm healthy. I'm a family man. Ladies and gentlemen, here to tell us how far along the freedom road he's travelled, David Cassidy. Yes, the road to freedom, huh? Yeah. Uh, here we are. The sun is shining. What was it? The sky was blue and uh, yeah. I don't have a gun to my head. And you're lying on a beach and you want some water, do you? Uh, I wouldn't mind it, sure. What, you're doing? Yeah. What, was, what was, if you can remember it, the last straw that tempted you to get out and get away from all the things that uh, were bogging you? Well, it, I don't think there was a last straw. I think it was just a culmination of a, a lot of things. You know, I just was under a 16 hour day, you know, and uh, it, it just, I was losing myself. I, you know, I essentially lost my own identity in doing what I was doing. And it, uh, it was difficult for me, you know? I just got to the point where I felt like I had done it, you know? I had done that experience. And um, you get to a point where you think, you know, what am I working for? Am I working for me? I'm being manipulated. And I think there was such a blatant misrepresentation of me as an artist and as a human being. I got to a point where I just had to stop. I was losing myself. But did you know who you were? I mean, you, you started being manipulated at a very early age, didn't you? I mean... well. Yeah. I Almost at the age of consent, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, I was about 19, I think, when I got into the series. But, uh, you, you know, you, when you're an, I was an actor, you know. I'd done a Broadway show, and I, I'd done a lot of dramatic shows as an actor. And uh, the whole thing was kind of bizarre the way it took place, in, in chronologically at least. Mm -hmm. I, got in, into, um, I got into the show, I did the pilot and, as an actor, and I signed my name to a contract, therefore it gave them the right to, um, to use my name and my image, etc. And you had no idea what was going to happen to you at that moment? Well, they, you know, they would come up to me and say, hey, you know, next week, it's going to happen for you, kid. And I, I, I really had no idea. I, I hadn't, uh, you know, I didn't foresee it happening. Like Were you it wanting it to happen to you? Not like that, you know. I mean, uh, there was, uh, we all have set goals for ourselves, I think, and professionally it was more a question of me wanting to be a working actor, a respected actor, and I, mm. I don't think I accomplished that. I accomplished a lot, a, lot, a lot of other things I didn't think I would, mm. you know, which I'm real pleased about. Mm. The fact that, you know, it, it's... Like what? Hold on, like what? Like well, what? Have a drink and then tell me what. I think that, um, I reached a lot of people, you know, mm. and, um, I was exposed to a lot at, mm. um, at, an early, at such an early age, mm. I think that um, moving people, it's a media experience, you know, television, records, concerts, etc., what I was doing, and the fact that I, I moved a lot of people and they moved me, I think is what it really all is, is all about, you know. Mm. Without the people, you're nowhere, and the fact that there are that many people out there that ended up caring. But they didn't know who you were. No, they? What, they, what they saw was uh, something they thought was me, consequently that's why I'm here, and you and I are talking the way we are. And uh, I think the, the most important for me, thing for me now is, as an artist and as a human being, is to reveal, you know? I think that's essential for me. If they really do care, they want to know who what, I am. What vastly intrigues me is if you know tonight yeah. who you are. I think I do. One would like to think and, one does. All right, fine. Now, if you do... In a couple of minutes when I'm over there, I'm not sure. But well, yeah. that, that's for later. But, I mean, this is a dangerous part of our conversation, this. If you do <laughs> know who you are, seriously, yeah. how do you differ from what they think you were? I mean, how do you differ from the plastic image and the, and the nice smiling lad and, the, you know, the hair? Well, I like to... Yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know... I'm Where are your pimples? Well, <laughs> I've got one here and I've got one over here. I, you know... That, I, I, don't that. Mean, I don't mean psych, I don't mean no, physical pimples. I mean, I where are mean. the roughnesses of your character? Yeah. Well, uh, doing an, uh, it's very difficult to be objective, uh, of course, about yourself. I think that I became very paranoid and very insulated, 
by the whole the whole experience. You mm. know, I became very skeptical. I'm I'm basically basically a skeptic anyway. Mm. But I became very skeptical about everybody. You know, what do they want from me? You know, they, they want your wallet and they want their ass. What do they? You know, mm. what is it? Or know? both. Or both. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully both. <laughs> <laughs> at, at any rate, at least the latter. <laughs> they. Uh, <laughs> Uh, You're on dangerous ground. Yes, I certainly am. I feel the earth move. Um, Just keep your ass on the chair, baby. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Who, you who, see this is going. Yeah, who, who, whom did you, in all these periods of self-doubt and, and crisis of identity and all these lovely words that we load onto ourselves yeah. and when we have problems, yeah. whom did you turn to? Who was with you? Who was close by on the end of the telephone? Anybody? Uh, well, I've had a manager who's known me since I was eight. Mm. And I've had a couple of close friends who were really, really, really mirrored for me, you know? Mm. And um, they helped me through a lot of emotional lows and crises. And yeah, but one, look, hold on. One does not want to mirror when is, one is in an emotional... I think it's necessary, you know, for me. At least it was at the time, because I was losing... When you, you lose yourself, I understand I was working 16, 18 hours a day, mm. doing something, betraying something, that wasn't me. I was acting. I was doing songs and, and material at night after I would spend all day at the studio doing songs for that television show. And uh, on the weekends I would do concerts. Consequently, I was doing all of those hit songs, etc. Mm -hmm. And I'm not rubbishing the, the trip, the experience, you know. It was just, I wished... I love the fact that I was able to reach that many people and move them. Mm -hmm. I just always wished... wished I, I was very frustrated because I was never able to do what I wanted to do. I was never able to say, hey, listen. A lot of this isn't really me. A lot of this is, is jive, and I don't want you to be taken by it. Mm. You know, if you really care and you want to know about who I am, this is who I am. I was never, I didn't have the opportunity, I didn't have the vehicle. <coughs> right, but you that. see, the difficulty you're in, and I'm sure you would, you would recognize this, is that when you are in that situation and built that big and yeah. that large, yeah. there is no way in which you can communicate with one individual person, is there, uh, in the audience. You can't say, look... Uh, uh, well, you, you don't look at, a, at an audience as... Um, as one person, but it, it, I mean, it, it, it is essentially. I mean, you, you, you're not looking at one specific person when you're out there. You're not going, oh, yes, I'm looking at you. Uh, no, I mean, it's more a question of like you are. I mean, you're focusing yourself to them. It's, it's a media experience. It's you and them. You revealing yourself to them and them giving you that feedback. And mm -hmm. that's what it's really all about. And when you're not giving yourself, you're giving something that was created for you, you right, know, right. manufactured for you. Right. You feel a little, it, it sometimes, it, you know, it turns inside your guts that you want to just say, hey, here it is, you know, flashing, the flasher, show us your lark, you know. <laughs> Remember that? No, uh, you no I, don't, I don't want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> have you. Ever been have you ever been physically hurt by fans at all? Well, I've had little cuts and scratches, etc. You know, yesterday had me, had my jacket torn off, but mm. uh, it, my concern mostly through all, that whole concert experience, you know, I haven't been on the road. Mm. Y y you, you said um, uh, in the beginning of the program, the introduction, etc., which is true, I, I won't be doing concerts any longer, and I, I haven't done that. You know, I remember when I stopped doing concerts, they all said, ah, it'll be back in six months, you know, and it's just, a, it's just one of those ploys to get them all to come out, for, you know, for, for more money. <laughs> and I had to stop the whole machinery, the, um, the show, the merchandising, the records, etc. I had to take a break and really get in touch with myself, get myself centered, you know, and really uh, reevaluate what I wanted to do as a human being and as an artist. And um, it's very difficult. It takes a lot of time and, it, you know, it's very painful often to look at Were you at happy at all by what you found after your reevaluation? Yeah, evaluation? I'm very happy now, you know, in as much as I, I see that there are people out there that are really receptive to what I'm doing and, and want to see me perpetrate that, you know? Yeah, but maybe that's not changed. Maybe that's a manifestation of what we had before. How do you know that it's not the same kind of uh, well, because idol I'm idolizing? Well, well, what are we talking about? We, we, it's not a condescending thing to, have so to idolize somebody. I mean, I don't, I don't look at anybody and say, don't ever idolize me or don't... I, I mean, mm. I think that all of us in one time or another in our lives have had someone that we looked up to or we, we idolized or... Envied. I mean, that's a word. That's a, do you have a, a hero statement. now at all? Do you have a hero now, anywhere? Well, I used to have Mickey Mantle, who was a baseball player in the States when I was about six, but since then, you know, I mean, I have people that I admire, I think, artistically, you know. Uh, it's difficult. I, I don't have a hero. I mean, I, I'm not caught up in a... I'm not... It usually comes from fantasy and daydreaming, etc. Which is very good, I mean... It can be a very imaginative, yeah. 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 I just find that... Are you um, imaginative? Uh, uh, in what sense? 
<laughs> Can you imagine what I'm thinking at this moment? Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> back to what we are talking, football, wasn't it? Do you, fan, do you fantas... Excuse me. Do you fantasize? Fantasize? Mm. Yes. Uh, mm. Yeah, I fantasize quite often. I've been in the cupboard a few times, you know. <laughs> I wonder what's going on out there. Yeah, I do. What I cupboard is it you have been in? <laughs> Actually, I'm a boy, yeah. You know, really? Revealing myself right Re now. Revealing all. Yeah. Well, you're, I presume, wealthy enough to, to really cut out tonight. If you, you could walk out of this studio, I presume. Mm. I'm being slightly impudent in asking you this question. Nevertheless, I shall ask it to you. Yeah. If you wanted really to break loose and break free tonight, you could go through the door and say, that's it, and... I did, you know, and I, I'm... You, I'm not working, I'm not doing concerts, et cetera. Mm. You, you know, there's a, there's a lot of money to be made. When mm. I stopped doing concerts, I was doing those big stadiums, et cetera, that were made for football and soccer and hockey and things like that. You know, there's not a musical experience that can take place that's really, to me, that is satisfying, at least mm. not for me as an artist. I don't think it's uh, for people, to, uh, as an audience, you know. Mm. I think that it's, it's, it's essentially that the best musical experiences I ever had were in concert halls, et cetera. And if I ever got back to touring, and I would like to do that when the experience does evolve further, you know, I said I would come back and, and do... I, I didn't say I'll never tour again. What I did say was that I was going to stop doing that until the experience changes. And I think it is, you know, on the feedback I'm getting on an artistic level, and it's all, I suppose, how you equate success. Um, the album, last two albums that I've made, the new one that's coming out uh, next month, the reviews I've, got, I've gotten on it, etc., have been most complimentary were um, they never were before, you know, on an artistic level. They always rubbished them and they sold a lot of records. Well, perhaps they've seen you suffering a bit. I mean, quite well, generally, they've seen you... I'm not suffering now. No, 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 but you have you obviously gone through some kind of crisis bit and, yeah, and decided sure. what to do. Sure. There's nothing that pulls the critics back to your side so much as to see you being in a human situation and behaving like an ordinary kid. In yeah, well, I think an ordinary kid... Yeah, well, I don't have He's my tennis shoes on tonight, but I wish I had. Well, you have ordinary kids shoes on tonight, too, yeah. doesn't it? Talking about ordinary kids, you have yes. an extraordinary brother who's embarking on almost the same career as you. So I understand. <laughs> um, I, I, I said that not facetiously because you, I... You, of course, I, you said it facetiously. I didn't, honestly. I, I do know he's made a record, but I, he and I really don't discuss those kinds of things. I mean, I think that he's learned perhaps a lot about what one goes through and seeing me mm -hmm. go through my emotional highs and lows and, and saw a lot of the pitfalls. You know, he comes from a... Show his family, his mother and father. Does he talk to you at all? Yes. As a matter of fact, in the last year, he and I, he's, he's, um, he's very sophisticated for his, for his years. Shut up back there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's very sophisticated for his years, and he, he's bright, you know. And being 17, you know, it's very easy to criticize somebody, you know, um, for making a record, the kind of record that they produced for him. I think it's, it's a game, the machinery behind an artist suddenly says, well, he's David Cassidy's brother, so we'll make him this kind of a record, therefore it's a natural for him to do that. He sees that. He wants to be successful. And do you think he's learned by anything that he's seen happen to you? Oh, I'm sure he has. He's very perceptive. And uh, I hope he ha it happens for him. I don't, he and I don't discuss that at one time. I think he wanted me to produce him. But I think that, that at, this, at this point, I, I, I couldn't devote that kind of time to anybody else's... But it is group. a heavy weight, isn't it, for, for anybody to be David Cassidy's brother? Or I for mean, whatever nice, of however course. nice a lad he is. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he goes through a lot, of, mm. a lot of pain and a lot of, you know, frustration about that. And, I mean, there's no denying it. The, th the thing is just to accept it mm -hmm. and to um, make whatever mark he's going to make for himself, you know. If he's good, I mean, he's 17, and I think for 17 he's quite good, you know. How good, I don't know. I mean, at 17, who knows? I mean, you're 17 years old. Mm. I mean, what did I know at 17? You know, I was sitting in the boys' room smoking cigarettes. Oh, you... How awful. <laughs> sure. How dreadful. You get... You get... Or you're getting offers of films, aren't you? you the film scripts are pouring in. I have had a number of them. Unfortunately, people that are behind the, the machinery, behind the film industry, and the people that make those decisions, have a tendency to be unimaginative. And I'm not saying all of them, but... For the most part, they, they see something that is successful and, like most folks, they don't want it. They, they want to obviously capitalize you upon that. You can't blame them for that, can yeah, you? Yeah, no, no, you can't at all. And Have you uh, had some bizarre offers or...? Yeah, a couple of blue movies here and there, but um, it wasn't me, you know. I, I, I've, it's either that, you know, it's, it's quite bizarre. It's either that or it's, you know, Dis Disney-esque kind of boy meets dog meets dog meets boy kind of <laughs> meets sheep. <you> know. <laughs> The sheep is the one on the left. Yeah, right. <laughs>
<laughs> Listen, whatever it is that you've decided to do, I, I hope that you do it with the same kind of articulate enjoyment that you've obviously got ex exposed in yourself tonight, which I've quite enjoyed. Thank I was a you. bit, I was a bit sceptical at the beginning. I didn't, I well, thought, you nah. was I a bit. Were you? <laughs> well, I, you know, I have heard, oh, here I go. I've heard, I've heard many good things about, about you and about the program, etc. cetera. And I, I, the basic, the reason I'm here, <laughs> catch your moments. The reason I'm here is uh, essentially, I think, for an artist to, uh, for me at least, you know, being, having gone through that experience, is to reveal and to mm. find, you know, for, for me to, uh, I think, emerge as, a, as an artist, but as a, as a person, and it's nice to have that opportunity, and you've given that to me. Thanks thank for doing you. it tonight. And before you, you go, you will sing for us, will you? Well, I'll certainly try. Ain't much in the old throat, but I'll give it a go. The song is called Then I'll Be Someone, David Cassidy.